I think integrity. It's so it's so vital to who you are as an artist. And when you're as an actor, you're really collaborating to the vision of the people that you're collaborating with, the directors, the writers, the producers. And you want to work with people whose visions you align with. And if you align with that vision, it's going to be a space where you really grow artistically yourself and you can really celebrate the work together. If it's not something you align with, then you're sacrificing your integrity. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Wild Truth. I have a very special guest. She's not only a star, she's an incredible actress, she's a model, she, she does it all, but forget about all that. She's one of my dear, dear friends. I consider her my best friend. Aww. Please welcome <laughs> Nicole Zadigan. You're sweet. Thanks, Max. I'm so happy you're here. I I'm, I'm always come by. So, listen, this podcast will be very different in the sense where we know each other so, so well that there's so many things that maybe we think is not important or we, we won't go into details, but it will be very interesting for people. So I want to be aware of this. Okay. And I, I really, uh, you're very special to me for so many reasons, mainly because we, we know each other for so long. I know. Yeah. And we have such a beautiful history. We do. And you're such an incredible human. So are you. What is a definition of a best friend? Oh, my God. <laughs> because let me tell you why. Because she's my best friend, but I'm not sure if I'm her best friend. Isn't that a weird thing in your friendships? Like you feel like... You, you know, you consider someone's best friend, but then you, in, in inside deep, you go, bitch, you ain't my best friend. I feel like I haven't, I, I don't need to watch your show to know that you'd call everybody your best friend, but I really am your best friend. You're the, you're the first person I've called my <laughs> best friend on the show. That's a lie. Uh, it is a truth. This is a, a wild truth. Uh, yeah. You know, I don't know. Actually, that's a good question. I know what I think a best friend is. You know, I don't know. You know, my niece is six and she has like a bunch of best friends, but Aww. she, like, classifies them between, like, her first best friend and her second best friend. It's so That's cute. adorable. I know. It's so cute. That's adorable. But, so, but I kind of feel like that's kind of how it is. Like, you have a lot of friends that are, like, really, really close, but then there's some people that you're just, like, I don't know. There's some people you have history with that's different. Definition, we have history. The definition of a best friend, to me. Yes. Best friend is somebody you have an incredible joy with. You're comfortable with that person. You trust them. And they're there for you. Yes. And and everything I said, you're that person. Oh, that's so kind. You know, in the most emotional, hard times of my life, you've been there for me. Uh, Whether I was going through a breakup or I was frustrated with my work or I was mad at somebody. I feel like you're somebody that I can call at any time and you're, you're so reliable. And I'm so comfortable with you. And I can share anything and you, you, you would not judge me. You too. You always give me the best feedback. Well, good. I'm glad. I'm yeah. glad you feel that way because I feel That's that way about you. And I'm happy that you have that in your life and I get to be that person. Yes. So let's dive into all the times you were an asshole to me. <laughs> <laughs> never. <laughs> yeah, never. Ever. Really. Never, ever. It's true. It's so true. So No, um, but you take it well when I have to like tell it to you straight. Mm-hmm. And we've known each other since we're in our 20s. Yes. Yeah, we so Which for so like many people year. that are listening to this podcast or watching this, Nikar and I met. Um, I was I had just graduated college. She had just graduated kindergarten, <laughs> and um, we both were cast on a play that was touring through Europe, mm-hmm. and it was it was an Iranian play, starring one of the biggest names of Iranian cinema, you know, the Behruz Marlon Brando Vusuri, of yes. Iran. Behruz Vusuri, and he's, he's just such a sweet, loving man. Mm. And we both were so excited to be a part of this we cast. Were. Wonderful, wonderful show. We yeah. had the best time. We had the, the best, best time. time. We traveled through Germany, Sweden. We went to Dubai. Yeah. Every time I think of Dubai and I think of you, my heart rate goes up. Why? We were in Dubai. I and, don't. And we stop. were going to go <laughs> to the bazaar. No, not stop. We were going to go into the bazaar, and, and Nikar goes, All right, I'll be ready in two minutes. Just and then stop. She, she, we meet her in the lobby. We're in the Middle East, about to go into the bazaar. Yeah. And she's wearing a that's short a, that's shirt. Not, that's a lie. Yeah, it's that's the truth. A lie. It's, such a, it's so not a lie. 
Her shorts are so short. You don't know if it's a bikini or it's a short. And she's wearing a, a top, a tiny little that top. That's so untrue. We're I was like, wearing, that's so untrue. I was, that's so untrue. I was wearing a dress, first of all. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. it's exactly what she was wearing. I go, I cannot protect you. This is the Middle East. What are you thinking? That's so not true. I was wearing a dress and it was lovely. It so was we bought a blanket dress. and we wrapped her in it. We, uh, sweats. <laughs> <laughs> I, <want sets. laughs> I, My didn't know. God. I didn't know it was going to be a, a we learned we spectacle. learned we learned you know what it's like to be in different countries we were in Germany we were lost and uh you know no that was the most fun when we got yeah. lost on the train yes do you remember when we got oh, lost yeah, on the train yeah, 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 yeah. we didn't get yeah. lost we just didn't get off we didn't get off oh, the train I remember the why we didn't get off time Yes, because the train, because it was Germany and they like really wanted to stop at the right time and then get going at the right time. And you, and the people got off really fast, remember, yeah. with their suitcases yeah. and everything? Yeah, and we were too ages. <laughs> no, you actually, but I, I, I didn't dis- I know, disagree with you. You were like, why is everybody rushing? And the train just took <laughs> off. And and then there was no more stops. Remember, we had to go to the end of the line? Yeah. And we ended yeah. up in that cute little town. Yes, you were going to Frankfurt. We were, we were in this city. We were in the city. I don't know what city we were in, but we we realized wherever we are is close to both of our, the destination where we're both going. You were going to Dusseldorf probably. Um, And so we got on the train. We're having the best time. I have my suitcase and all that stuff. And uh, I think we were watching a little movie on my phone. We were just talking, whatever we were doing. We were just in this, like in our own little bubble. Oh, it was so fun. And here comes our spot. You know, the stop is there. We we, we ran and, and we grab and people are just like rushing out. We're like, what the hell's wrong with these people? And we get to the door, boom, door closes in our face, and the train goes. And we're like, uh, what do we do? It did. And it Nikar, in our Nikar face. speaks such a beautiful German. Like, El shoot again. And then some lady turns on and says, and Was useless. My German yeah. got it was useless. It didn't help at all. We still had to stay on the train. It helped the enough for us to know there's no more stop. <laughs> Till the end of the line of this train. Yeah. And that was like another two hours or something. Yeah. And, and you so have pictures we from that little town. To some small little town. And yeah, you yeah. sent me those pictures recently. We, I'm going to share some we of the pictures so here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that, so, that little town was so cute. So cute. We like modeled it a- a- everywhere, every yeah. corner of that little town. We walk into we a town else to do. that but probably had dead, 50 remember? people population. Yeah, it was a really small little like <laughs> cow town. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. We went to a little town. restaurant. You remember that? We went to a little restaurant. We had food. Restaurant. We must yeah. have done I remember, something. I remember that, that, that little spot. Mm, it was such cute. a cute little town. It really was. Let me remind you. We walked over this bridge and you go, God, this is like being in the movies. And yes, I, like, cool. I remember that. We took some pictures there. I'll share them here. Yeah, on, I remember the, the pictures we took on that bridge. And then we, we were walking to find food. And there was only like one restaurant that was open. <laughs> and as we were walking in this small town, literally maybe a hundred people lived there. Maybe. Yeah, it's coming back to me. And there was a sex shop. Oh my God, that's right. <laughs> oh my God, we're that's like, right. <laughs> why there's a store? Like how much that's business right. does this You're store so close, I remember now. have that, that they, they have a sell- sex shop? I know. I mean, it was fascinating. It was wild. They probably were missing every other regular shops that a city <laughs> might should have, but oh they made God. sure they have a sex shop. <laughs> You're right. I totally forgot that. Yeah. And it was wild. Really, really good times. Yeah, sweet. We trip. had such a good attitude about life. We really you know? did. We missed our train, but we it it didn't even like we didn't even flinch. I remember I called my uncle. I was going to see my uncle. My <laughs> uncle is very German like super German and he was like hello and I said hi uncle I missed my I missed the the stop and he was shocked he's like (laughs) what how do you how do you miss your stop you were in the train I was like yeah he goes the the train stop you didn't get off I was like hello (laughs) and then the way he questioned me I I felt like more of an idiot you know yeah I'm a grown-ass man I haven't seen this uncle in so many years and he was like okay well I'll come pick you up uh, oh, and then yeah, what that's time right. do you arrive? And I said at this time, but uncle, you don't need to pick me up. I'm a grown ass man. I'll get on a taxi and I, you know, but it was so funny because he was so serious and he's like, I'm going to pick you up because like he thought this guy is never going to make it to my house. I'm like, uncle. <laughs> I and I was getting offended. I'm like, uncle, I no, got I remember this. That, yeah. And he's like, you sure? I was like, yes, <laughs> just give me the address. He goes, do you have a pencil? I go, what is this? 1928 <laughs> pencil. I can write it in my phone. And he's like, oh, okay, you ready? I'm like, yes. He goes, Schuldenstrasse. I go, what? 
Schrosenstrasse. Like, how do you have, spell you have, like, that? Did you have like a BlackBerry at the time? Yeah. How yeah. do you spell? Like, you can't spell if you're not if you don't know German, <laughs> you can't no, spell you can't these spell spell words. Fuschrosenresen. <laughs> like what? Excuse me. Like, how do I start it? How do I end Fuschrosenstrasse? <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh I just remember Straße. You know. And and Strasse, so yeah, street. Yeah, so I I by That's the right. time I made it to his house, it was so late. Aww. It was just like get your ass, like come on in. <laughs> That's your bed. Good night. <laughs> Guten Nacht. And you just went to bed. Oh my God, that was fun. We Let's talk about your incredible career. What do you want to talk, What do you want to talk about? Well, you know, as somebody who was very young, uh, I was an actor. Just I had graduated uh, college. You know, you had just finished college, and you were we were both getting into this world of acting in Los Angeles, and and it seemed like something out of this world, right? And you were so good, so talented, so smart. You got your agent, and 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 you started like auditioning, and you started just really just killing it. <laughs> yeah, I remember you're like Max. I booked this show, and I booked the other show, and we're like, wow, you started doing guest stars on really great shows and then all of a sudden you landed 24 yeah and that that was like a top show at the time everybody was watching the tw like 24 24 was like a favorite tv show of so many people yeah it was a really great show yeah i mean you know i think that i mean we were so young when we were doing that show we were so young and we were so fresh out of school and we didn't you know we're not we're not from here, right? We're not like part of these, like, you know, the Douglases, these legacy families and stuff. We didn't know anybody, mm -hmm. you know? And we were just like n not part of the machine and not, you know, we didn't know, we didn't have anybody to, to reach to, to inform us or anything. We were really just figuring it out, just kind of blind. And it's really, really hard. And you don't even know how hard it is because you don't know, mm -hmm. you know? And um, that's why I think... I think it's so important to be ready and because opportunities will come and to be ready for those opportunities is really, really important. And that's why I think education is so important and to know your craft is so important mm -hmm. so that when those opportunities come, you can meet them. Because, you know, a lot of people when they're young do get opportunities um, and cannot meet them. And if you're feeling like you're not getting opportunities, you know, then you want to be prepared for when they do come because they will come. Mm -hmm. I think figuring out your own process is, is so important. Figuring out how you work, figuring out how you figure things out. And I don't mean about, you know, kind of the rat race or anything like that. I mean, mm -hmm. just really when it comes to your craft mm -hmm. and your art, because that's okay. for you. Speaking of, speaking of craft... Mm -hmm. What institution do you feel like you got the most out of and you learned uh, you learned acting in a way that it, it really helped you in your career? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I majored in um, English literature. And uh, even though I, had, I was working professionally um, as an actress, um, studying literature and, the, and those greats, it really informed me. And that's why I say I think your education in, in all respects is so important. Drama school is really important, of course. You went to drama school, too, you know. Um, but that background that I have um, and, and studying literature, which, which I chose to do because I'm an actress, you know, it informs me all of the time, reading Shakespeare, reading all those characters, all those stories that are based in that. I refer to that stuff all the time. Mythology, archetype. I, wor I often work archetypically. Um, so archetypes in terms of, you know, that, that structured storytelling, I apply that all the time. And I, I really value that. I think that's really valuable. To be the more awareness you have of story, mm -hmm. the more you can be inspired with regards to storytelling. I think that's really valuable. That's amazing. That's amazing. I, I feel um, for me. You know, I understand, and and honestly, as I'm listening to you, mm -hmm. I'm realizing yeah, you're right. Like I took a little something um, from each, you know, coach that I worked with. Mm -hmm. I worked with this. Uh, lady at UCLA, Delia Salvi, 
she was the professor of directing and she was she's she was very well known and loved in the industry she was probably one of the harshest most angry woman i've ever met in my life mm. this italian like just she was everybody was scared of delia mm. she would just scream all of us in the class what the fuck are you doing get the fuck out of sit your ass down you and yeah. she would just lose it yeah those old school teachers Oof. teaching that like old school style she was so I good know. yeah the things i learned in her class helped me direct my movie i mean like mm -hmm. i've read so many things after that but the things i learned in that class yeah and it's also like you're a sponge at that age you you're really taking it in you have all the time in the world and you're just so enthusiastic about totally your you know your your art you know your passion what you love to do so the, but but as i'm listening to you i love what you said um education as an overall it's really important because when you're an actor, you play so many different roles mm -hmm. and understanding, uh, you know, different worlds of whether it's science, whether it's um, something like tense, like it's a, a police academy or the, the different roles. And you've played so many diverse characters. You know, this is a this is a spot that I like to maybe ask you this question. Mm -hmm. You have played roles mostly that are very powerful. Uh, 24 you played the role of a president mm -hmm. you know um uh, emily md you played a very very confident very knowledgeable doctor and you carried that role in, in with such genuine air that when you're watching these episodes you believe that she's one of the best doctors she knows <laughs> what she's talking about right you play a lot of powerful women roles what is it about your confidence what is it about the 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 aura that you have that is that's able to embody these these big big roles i'm always interested in, in working on things that i'm interested in and so i mean i don't think of uh, any character in one sort of way i i try not to anyway i think that i think all kinds of aspects of the characters kind of are interesting for me but i don't i i i think i'm i just try to work on things that i'm drawn to no you're being humble but no, just I really mean it. no but look not <laughs> a lot of not people lying. not a lot of people can play really powerful roles just forget about acting in real life your posture your lifestyle the way you carry yourself it's so strong yeah but you know those things are all dependent on the character like you know when i was on broadway and i was doing that show um the Bengal Tiger show, I played a leper in the second act, remember? Mm -hmm. And there was um, a lot of physicality with regards to that character. I should have asked them for a chiropractor. <laughs> <laughs> I know you should <laughs> But I did not. <laughs> I remember. But, uh, you know, and, and that's why I say to your process, your own process, not like a certain teacher or I, I think it's wonderful to study every method and, and with every as many people as you can, um, because people have all kinds of different processes. But ultimately, you have to find out what works for you and what, what makes you able to get into a character. And it's mm -hmm. going to change, you know, from story to story or character to character. Hopefully yeah. it changes. Yeah. Hopefully it's not. I mean, you know, every stage you go to, something's different. You know, 100%. every city you go to, every audience you work with, 100%. something's a little bit different. But not anybody can play a hard, badass gangster. Not every guy can do it. Right? right. Well, I think, you know, that's not for you. I don't, I don't know if that's for you to figure out. I feel like the industry that, that you end up working in professionally will try to fit you into places mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from outside of your control. So I think it's up to you to, to go towards what you want. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah, but I also think... Um, Actors, artists, they bring a lot of themselves into these roles. Mm -hmm. You know, people that have a certain level of confidence in their own personal life, mm -hmm. people that experience power, control, different elements uh, that, that helps, that could be very easy for them to access when they, get, when they play such roles, mm -hmm. you know, uh, makes them more eligible to take on a role of a president or a king or a queen, yeah. So, and I think in your you case, you think I'm a confident person. I think I think you're very, I, I think you're very confident. <laughs> I think you understand what's it like. 
you understand what is it to be a very pow powerful lawyer, for example, and, and your emotional, your intense, dramatic scenes are so powerful. And if, you, if you're not familiar with what that is, you can't portray it for the screen. Mm -hmm. So looking into your personal life, you may not think, oh, okay, my personal life, I don't wake up in the morning and I go, where is my butler? <laughs> like, maybe you don't do that, but No, but that's but what you I mean. Have, like, you, you but I don't think, certain... I think it's rare. I mean, I, unless you're playing like commander that's going into battle or something like that, you're not necessarily usually thinking about a character like was wake up, waking up to be powerful or something. And when I think about those particular characters that you're talking about, you know, in, in most of the story, there was a lot of um, like struggle for these characters inside of those worlds that the stories were in. Mm -hmm. So I think that there is like the natural state of a character, you know, in their background and the, all that stuff that makes them who they are. Like, like if you're playing somebody from a, from a different period, a different time, you know, there's so much about that physicality. Mm -hmm. It's not just, you know, yeah. a girl yeah. in, in the present day going yeah. to pick up her laundry. You know, it's a woman of a different era going, talking to people. You know, so that affects your posture and your, you know, kind of all that stuff. You know, some people seem to fit a certain character more easily. Like the, the, the reach isn't as as great so it's not it's not as hard you know it's easier to get into a character that's that falls more naturally for you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i mean for me uh, every time i get cast i get stereotyped mm -hmm. i play the very sexy man right that's because evident. Mm -hmm. yes i ooze this sexual yeah. goddess god is that a struggle god, for you is that a struggle the fuck uh, I, <laughs> playing goddesses all the time is fuck. it a struggle <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're the joke tanks uh, fuck uh, you know what i mean um mm -hmm. no i never i never get to you play have no the struggle. sexy man ever they're like ah oh, look at that guy uh he looks like uh yeah he, he looks like he can blow himself up yeah, yeah, yeah. He looks like he can. He looks like the crazy person. You know, that's another important. <laughs> that's another important point too. Is like I think integrity. It's so. It's so vital to who you are as an artist. We came to this business in a post 9/11 time, mm -hmm. and that was particular for our journey. But I think that's like that's just the elephant in the room that you always have to address mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and that's something that i think is really particular to staying true to yourself artistically i mean for some people it might be i don't know it's, it could be all kinds of things it could be nudity or whatever it is for you you know but yeah, i think i i, I always make, make like sure like to be nude yes right and I, I think I that's would take i would have no doubt any doubts. nudity mm -hmm. scenes and uh they would they would consider and, and then they would consider I would audition him. and they no, were like right. oh, no sir this is going to ruin <laughs> this is this is not a comedy this is a very cool drama sexy and and, and thank you for trying no but i think um, integrity is a huge thing because what what you're doing is you're collaborating in this business almost in any art right mm -hmm. you're collaborating to some degree and when you're as an actor you're really collaborating to the vision of the people that you're collaborating with, the directors, the writers, the producers. And you want to work with people whose visions you align with. And if you align with that vision, it's going to be a space where you really grow artistically yourself and you can really celebrate the work together. If it's not something you align with, then you're sacrificing your integrity. And, totally. And that's, that's very painful and you're not going to enjoy it. And you're selling yourself, ultimately. No, you're 100% right. And you do that all the time. There's so many roles that you don't take. You know, it's really important. Yeah. It's become very important to me. And it's and it's something that was a harsh reality that, I, that we had to face very quickly because of this time that we came in, which was a post-9-11 works. I don't know that I, I would have understood that so quickly otherwise. But for me particularly... It was something that I really contended with very, very soon. Yeah. But you're very lucky. You've had so many amazing roles. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, and you pretty much um, never allowed the industry to put you in a box. Mm -hmm. You've had the most diverse, you know, NCSI agent, badass, like just incredible scenes. And then you, you played, like right now, your role in Mayors of Kingston. Mm -hmm. Just such an incredible 
beautiful role you have. It is a beautiful role, and I love it. Um, and this is what I mean. It was always really important to me to make sure that I worked with people who understood mm -hmm. what I understood. Mm -hmm. I, I always wanted to co-create. I never wanted to be just for hire. I always wanted to co-create something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That can, you know, and I'm really, yeah. and I, you're right, I am lucky that I, I was able to find those places. Yeah, well, you, you got to this <clears throat> level that you could you could actually um, you're, you're in a place in your career that you could have this sort of brainstormings and collaborations, etc. No, but even early on, I was real. I was really, really, really harsh with my teams about it. Mm. Um, remember when we used to work with Todd? Yeah, and yeah. you introduced me to my first great agent. I yeah. will always appreciate that. Love and Todd you. loved us, and we loved yeah. Todd it's so, so much. Yes. He was wonderful to work with. Yeah, what a what a safe, protective person to work with such young, inexperienced actors. Remember, he protected us so much. So much. And everybody has their own journey of where it's important to their integrity, the type of work that they do. And you have to know what that is, and you have to be clear with people and, and hold a hard line with regards to that. Because if you don't, it's really easy to slip one way or another and find yourself in things that don't align with who you are or what so you want to do. Beautifully said. Um, you mentioned uh, your play on Broadway. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about this because it was so special for me to be in New York. I know. And then I knew you have a show on Broadway, and Robin Williams was starring in the show. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, my God. I worked with some you great know. people as a kid. Yeah. It was great. Oh, And I was thinking, like, how cool is this? Like, I'm in New York City at the same time. That your show is still on on stage. Yeah, you were doing a you were doing stand up. Uh, yeah, in... but nothing like your Broadway. It's just called <laughs> Caroline's on Broadway to make it extra cool. But it, it's a stand up comedy club. Um, but but you know I felt so special. Uh, Nikar invited me to the show and and they gave me these amazing seats, and um, it was a sold out show. It, the the critics were raving about the show. It, it was, was, great it was show. Robin Williams playing a very out of a norm sort of roles yeah. for him. Yeah. You know, he had grown that beard and he was playing a tiger. And I was so excited to see you. So It was an me, exciting show. It was my Broadway debut. It yeah, was all of our Broadway yeah, debuts, yeah. even Robin's. Wow. I know, it was really special. And, and for me, it was so cool to see my friend on stage, mm -hmm. you know. And, and I remember after the show, you brought me backstage. I came around, I came backstage, we're hanging out. And you said to me, you want to meet Robin? I said, do I? I know, you were so shy. <laughs> Remember how shy yeah. you used to be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, you were so shy. Well, I mean, meeting Rob Williams, you would be a little shy. Yeah, but you, you were know? shy just generally. I am in particular, you know, situations, I'm shy. Yeah. Yeah. I remember meeting him, and he was so nice. Yeah, he was, he was a lovely And you person. told me something. You, you said to me, like, oh, my God, it's been a joy working with him. And I would love really to, was. like, I, I'm going to share, and then I'm going to hear, like, what was it like for you to work with him? Um, but for me, that, that little tiny bit of experience I had, you know, you introduced me to him and you said to him, this is my friend Max and, and he's a stand-up comedian. He's here for a show. He's selling out these great theaters and this and that. And, and Robin said, oh my God, that's great. And, and he started, he started asking me questions about stand-up. Uh, what's the scene like in LA? How's the comedy store? What's going on there? Mm. How's the, the and, and, and I was answering his questions and as I'm answering his questions, I'm like, I'm telling Robin Williams about the comedy clubs. <laughs> and like, what? I know. Like, this guy was in these clubs for years. Yeah. And it kind of made me realize it was his way of connecting to me. Yeah. And he was so sweet to give me, he like, He was really sort of, generous. You know what I mean? He was really generous He person. was putting me on the pedestal. Like, mm -hmm. you tell me how this thing is. Mm -hmm. And I thought, how gracious of him he yeah very what a, what a beautiful it was one of the most beautiful experiences i had and we talked and i told him how much i enjoyed his role this and that and afterwards i asked you and shared to, with us like how was the very first time for you when you met him and started from then on working with him on stage um arian moayed who's you know mm -hmm, is a wonderful mm -hmm. actor as well was in the project with us and uh he 
um, he was from New York. He lived in New York already. The rest of us had relocated to New York for the show. But he lived in New York already, and he we had already been a, a group of actors before Robin came on. We were working with another actor before they brought Robin on for the Broadway show. And so he had set up just super casual dinner for us at this burger joint in Midtown. Who did? Robin did? Arian did. Oh, Arian did. Arian did, oh, and for us to, you know, because we were all back there and for us all to get together okay. again. And he invited Robin. Okay. So that was the first time that I met Robin was at the burger joint, just the actors and Robin. And Robin was really um, kind of, you know, I, I guess people probably just didn't expect to see him, but he was also, he had that beard and he was wearing like a beanie and stuff. And he was so sweet and he, he had gotten there before I did, but he was, you know, I, it's, it's hard to describe him as shy because he wasn't shy, but he was just very humble, mm. you know, and um, kind and just just kind of one of us. And. So now that I look back, it was really special that Robin joined us because you could be in that situation and the star that's, you know, bringing the star name to the show, which just might not join, you know, not for any sinister reasons, just because, you know. What for? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he really. Go meet a bunch of peasants of actors. <laughs> I don't bunch know. Bunch of what wannabes. <laughs> no. But he was just really <laughs> just so excited. In not only, um, you know, in his talk, but in his actions very much to be there and work with us in the most down-to-earth ways. If there was one thing you'd say you learned from him, what would that be? I know what, he, I know what one thing he left me with. Please. That thing about integrity. That thing about integrity was huge. I was having a struggle personally with regards to work. Mm -hmm. at the time. It was a really mundane struggle. It wasn't a big deal. Not like anything I'd contend with now, <laughs> you know, but uh, just some really silly thing I was contending with. He had to come into makeup after I did. And I was talking with the makeup guy about it. And then he came in. And I don't even remember what it was now. I remember what he said to me. He said, don't ever let them scare you. Don't mm -hmm. ever let them scare you. And he said, also, if they tell you you're going to make a lot of money doing it, don't do it. <laughs> Wow. Just do it because you love it. It's and, really beautifully said. Yeah, and that was um, the thing about integrity. A lot of people don't know how um, generous he was with regards to the troops and how um, philanthropic he was um, during that time of the war with Iraq. But he was. And uh, the show meant a lot to him because it spoke to things that weren't really you know, being spoken about. And he didn't really want to, I, I don't know, but if he did or if he didn't want to, but he wasn't really sp speaking um, about politically, but in his actions, again, in terms he of was. integrity. Beautiful. Yeah, he Beautiful. was. But isn't it incredibly common mm -hmm. amongst some of the most well-respected figures in mm -hmm. life, now in this case, talking about industry, mm -hmm. actors, directors, those who don't sell themselves out, mm -hmm are always some of the most respected, greatest figures of, of, of their their world, you know, that whatever in yes. industry they're in. I've not met one great actor that does anything besides what you just said. They all, you know, will only take what means something special to them. They're, they're out there to make something great they're there to make an impact. And therefore, that intention carries into their work and, and, and it pays off. Yeah. You can't be a phony and have such a, you know, stature uh, because well. time alone will... <laughs> no, I, th I think time will make you fall off the charts if, if you're phony. You could be phony for, you know, a couple of, you know, projects or you, you can carry it for so long, but the, if you're not the real deal, you don't have a lifetime career. You don't have like, such impact like these people. I think I, I think what you're talking about is like frequency, right? The frequency you're sending out and people can feel that, right? No, I think Behrouz, for example. Mm -hmm. Behrouz, like maybe a lot of people don't know, he's an Iranian actor. But the reason he's so loved mm -hmm. is because he never sold out. Even at the most vulnerable time in his life, the most you know, um, t needy time of his life where he, he was so, he was an immigrant in America, mm -hmm, he needed mm -hmm. the money and they offered him all these terrible roles to play as a Middle Eastern mm -hmm. and, and he turned it down and he said, I would never portray my country and my people in this, in mm -hmm. this way. 
and shame on you for making this movie and having this character. He turned out so many, you know, roles and, and projects when, when he, you know, financially he really needed it. Yeah, no, I, 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 see, I see what you mean. I think that's, I think probably even if you're trying to maintain that, sometimes things happen, but, you know, people take jobs for all kinds of reasons. Mm-hmm. But I think that's why I think in having your integrity is it's it's so for yourself. It's so much for who, who you're saying you are as an artist. And I think that that's how you show it. I mean, you yeah. can say who you yeah. are, but your actions will tell what kind of, who you are yeah. more than what you say. Well, who you are as an artist, it's so admirable. Thank you. Not just because you're my friend, not because you're here. Your my best guest, friend. My best friend. I really think you're one of the great ones. Thank you. Okay, I had a great time. And I want to tell you, you should come on my show more often. <laughs> I think uh, sharing I come by all stories, the time. This is the first time you asked me to be on your show. Yeah, yeah, of course. But, <laughs> but you know, you can be on my show anytime you like. Okay. I think we should do more episodes because we have some so many amazing stories we should do just a that people would love to hear. And I'll play guitar. No. Okay. That's exactly what we should not do. Well, Play guitar and I my sing. Guitar is right I sing me. along. That, that sounds like I'm losing all my fo- <laughs> like Right now, as you said that, I think I'm losing followers. Please don't unfollow. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I only brought Nikar because she's making a movie that she's going to put me as her co-star. And, um, and I can't wait to play the psycho killer role that she's got for me you're gonna love it <laughs> yeah. yes and, and to be continued <laughs> nikar thank you so much thank you for having really, me really really i love having you on my show and we're going to do this more often okay anything you want to leave our listeners with i'll be glad to see you on the next show okay it is <laughs> what it is see you soon peace <laughs>